SFJ 4x4 Studios presents in my in my oversized four wheel drive Jeep a Jeep podcast starring industry experts pure monosity what what, what? <laughs> say that again with mad scientist Scott Brown use my drill press as a sort of lathe our host Neil Simpson if one light goes out they all go out Filled with shenanigans. We we are really professional with Jeeps. This is I Speak Jeep. I Speak I Speak Jeep Podcast. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever, however you're listening to us, Jeep and automotive enthusiasts of all ages, shapes, kinds, so on and so forth. This is episode 17. Episode 17. And we're going to be talking about why the LJ is the greatest Jeep of all time. <coughs> <What>? <laughs> Center Force clutches, uh, Center Force product as our product hashtag not sponsored uh, segment. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, what our trail team was doing this weekend and wheeling in general at Southington Off-Road. I am Neil with SFJ4x4.com, Simpson Family Jeeps, and my esteemed colleague of many wearing the many coat of colors in life, Mad scientist Scott Brown, not a good trail leader. Scott that Brown. guy, also <laughs> questionable. That spotty. is true. Also, also questionable. Spotty. <laughs> as as some of our stories, uh, if you've listened to some of the previous podcasts, you know how conservative he is in his approach to off roading. That's why my Jeep's name's Oscar. I like to be by myself. You know, so you already <laughs> said that. You, you know, and I had to ask. I had I saw on social media because, of course, I follow you. As yeah. I as I told so many other people. Uh, you know, and as a person who's heavily involved in social media and and arguably kind of heavily followed, um, reasonably speaking, I, I live vicariously through everybody else who's, you know, who's out doing these cool things, whether they're racing Jeeps or building cool products or going uh, trail rides. And um, so I saw you on your on your social media that says Oscar is a her. Yeah, I, I was very confused by that. It's fine. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> New information came to light. Okay, so so so. I so always think of my vehicles as hers. Your vehicle doesn't matter are what they're hers. named. It's green. It and doesn't it likes matter it by the name. So it's, a, it's so Oscar. The name is Oscar, <laughs> and it identifies as a her. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know what's actually funny is because uh, when we talk about that, and, we, and actually one of these episodes, we'll talk about what's in a name because I actually really love that idea. I was going to make a YouTube video about it, um, why and how we name our Jeeps. Yep. Um, and you know, and that's that's special. That's important. It's it's neat seeing why and how people name their Jeeps. Uh, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> typically people think of their vehicles as as a gender of, of female gender, yeah. right? They say her. At she's least a good with the Jeep. hot rods, she's... they do. Right. Yeah. Whereas, and my... that's where I come from. So my vehicles, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. My vehicles are always dudes, like yeah. the duty dudes. You know, yep. the, the... Oh, it makes sense. Old blue Chuck Norris, big red. You know, they're not makes sense. I'm not. Nothing I have is is. Comes from your sports, I guess. Maybe the <laughs> little Tim Allen, <laughs> little Tim Allen. So, um, yeah, folks, if you have been on any social media from the SFJ push side of things on a personal level, um, we had a, a, a great representation at Southington Off Road this weekend, um, and there was, of course, you know, ample amount of preparation in the last fifteen minutes of the workday on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah, actually, it's stretched off and a little longer than that. But I sure, had to, I had to go get kids and come back. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. I actually have a picture, and I doubt I doubt Jeffrey brought it, but I actually have a picture of um, all of your kids in the in the showroom. The the the, the yeah. seat has been changed so they can watch TV at the yeah, front. Yeah, Aiden was changing at the front counter, running the the show on the TV, making sure everything was appropriate. It was a Jeep party was. at the shop. It was, it was a was. Jeep party at the shop, and and of course, in in kind of old school fashion. Um, you know, where you guys were wrenching and readying vehicles. Yep. Um, and so before we talk about that, I want to just reach out and thank everyone who is joining us or has joined us. And it's important to note if you're on Facebook, you can hang out live with us, obviously 1019, 1020, uh, depending on when we start, <laughs> um, every Monday. And you can interact with us. And then the video will be up for about 24 hours. 
and we will then, uh, the video comes down off of Facebook and it goes on to YouTube in a production, a post-production style video with some of the pictures and fun things that, uh, again, our team can insert into it. Uh, but additionally, you can be listening to us, and maybe you are, on your favorite uh, podcast series. So whether that's Audible, Spotify, iTunes, so on and so forth, um, you know, you can be listening to us by, by roughly Wednesday following the, the live services. And we appreciate your, uh, your, your support and encouragement in the process. If you, you know, think highly enough, go out, leave a review, and make sure you spread the message uh, for, you know, a fun, rocking experience from industry experts. Uh, based on product and cool stuff happening with people's Jeeps and, and hot rods. So, uh, and as, as usual, we typically ask, you know, what did you do this weekend? And obviously we know you went, uh, we went, you went wheeling. Yeah. Well, in, in true Neil, you know, following in your footsteps, passion, I tried to cram as much life in the Sunday as possible. So after, uh, I kind of got my second win because I was tired after SOR. Right. Uh, Isn't it amazing how that oh, happens? Oh, my goodness. I was so beat. I mean, the you're kids, just wheeling. You're riding around in a tired. vehicle. Yeah, I was like, I sat on my butt all day, but I am tired. Yes. Uh, but after I got my second win, me and my wife went out, and she, uh, she's she been doing furniture projects uh, out in the garage with me, keeping me company. And I uh, picked up my 36 frame and hung it sideways from my uh, engine hoist and spray painted over top of my coating i put on it because i'm heck or high water it's going to be a roller again <laughs> nice so nice i saw the sandblast it come back it came back from sandblast about a week ago or just under uh, honestly it was thursday thursday so yeah. it comes back from sandblast and and that was the best thing you could have done because there were some sins under the yeah yeah i was able to fix a couple spots i knew about them uh there was no hidden surprises there was a couple spots I needed to zap a few times, but that was not a big deal. Oh, of okay. Previous repairs, now it was all cleaned out. I was like, oh, I, I need to get a little bit more uh, in there and smooth it out. And I don't like uh, body working frames. I want to have everything as smooth as it should be before the coating. So I went ahead and zapped up the spots and filed them off so it was all smooth and stuff. Oh, okay. So that's what I was doing there and repaired the bad spot I knew about. I left it open so they could get in and sandblast that out. And uh, then got some pure 15 hashtag not sponsored, <laughs> painted all the, the frame, got it in all the nooks and crannies, did that over two nights, uh, again, flipping it upside down or upside down, and uh, and then wanted to top coat it just because. So Right. Well, that's the right thing to do, because unfortunately, the those really good uh, paints like pure 15 or Chassis Saver by Magnetic Paints, um, <clears throat> They they're not they do break down in yeah, UV light. Yeah, they're not light. UV stable. They're not UV rated. Yeah, UV stable. So they do require a top coat. Granted, it'll be a miracle for this to see sunlight when I'm done because it's gonna be low. But uh, I figured I'd do it anyway. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah, I so. mean it's it's the easiest to do it at this point. So I'm I'm getting running downhill. I got two bolts. I gotta come in. I ordered them from my springs because. Uh, I had round uh, spring bolts with square holes in the frame, and I don't like that, so I bought square bolts. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so those it's are, only appropriate. Those are on the way. I'm going to switch those out, and then the axles will be back in there. Uh, there's a couple more things I'm going to do, and running downhill for the engine to come back. So Nice. Hopefully soon we'll nice. have a... And, and, and your wife, what... What is she? What furniture project was she working on? Well, there? she found a forlorn uh, homeless mirror. She uh, loves furniture she projects. She does. She really fancies herself on she's, HGTV. And she saw this mirror, and uh -huh. it was still there, at, you know, batting its eyes at her from the curb. And she went back and got it. And it's actually a very nice mirror. And she sanded it all down with her, her, uh, you know, Valentine's present. And <laughs> there it is. It comes back around. He had to bring that up. He had to bring up uh, her satisfaction with her sander. Her sander. And uh, from Valentine's Day. <laughs> she. Uh, Went ahead and stained it, and she put the varnish on that or uh, urethane on that last night. And tonight she has to scuff it with some steel wool and do it again. And she started sanding down a little, I don't know, small table, 12 by 12, two or three drawer tall table that we had kicking around from her childhood, honestly. I have so much furniture to donate to you guys. <laughs> I love when she gets in these moods. I'm uh. going to. I'm going to line she's her up. She's got a dresser she's got to finish. I, well, I, w I wasn't going to bring up the dresser. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up. 
Um, I, I definitely think I got to be uh, enclosing the other side, making it all warm at this point, because I'm going to lose some space. She's going to encroach. She's yeah, going she, to she she have her already. workshop. She, her, Last she needs, night, I was like, hey, can you stop standing on your thing? Because all your white dust is getting in my say, black paint on the frame. You just painted black, and now oh, no. she's running the sander. <laughs> oh, gracious. Gracious. So I, uh, I, I had... Uh, well, Chuck got worked on over the weekend. He did. That yeah. by you, though. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we know about that. Yeah. So, Probably more than you do. <laughs> so uh, it's important to note you that. You know how a um, plumber's house is always leaky pipes. And, uh, oh, boy. Mechanic's oh, car is always broken. Jeep shops. Jeep's always. Oh, yeah. boy. So <laughs> it's important to note that. I, I had I had no uh, misconception. I was not going to make it to Southington. I, I knew that from from the get go. You were doing as some much fun stuff like with to. the family. I was. I was doing some really fun stuff with the family, and uh, we we actually there's a American Ninja Warrior course oh, in Erie. Oh, oh dear, honestly, it was a blast. Um, and then obviously I was working on the tiny house as well uh, because of the great weather and, and needing to make some some headway there. Yep. Um, but folks who are listening in, obviously, you know, Chuck Norris is a, a pretty highly modified vehicle that uh, honestly just got on the road just under a year ago. And it's not driven, you know, like a, a regular customer's vehicle. The expectation is, is you're going to put, you know, arguably thousands of miles on it. G- Chuck's been done for about a year on and off the road. And I, we have about a thousand miles on it. And as professionals, uh, we typically try to get you in uh, around the 500 to a thousand mark, a uh, thousand mile mark to, you know, go over, you know, torque specifications, check fluids, all those types of, of big things that happen, um, you know, while you're after post a big project. Plus, with a big build like that, you're tinkering, you're adjusting, you're fine tuning things. Things that you realize, like, oh, this wasn't the best place for it. We're going to move it over here. Yep. Uh, but it's also important to note that in my thousand miles, I've put it on a trailer, drug it down to the Atlantic Ocean, and wheeled on the beaches for a week. Uh, obviously, I've buried it in the snow. <laughs> uh, we've played in some local woods in Pennsylvania, you know, so it's not been the kindest thousand miles. And then obviously, I've got on the highway and done 70, 80 comfortably because it's a, it, it can it's do that. Be much better now. Hell Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So, so what ends up happening is our, 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 our extraordinaire media folks, um, uh, videography, drone, media marketing managers. They were, they were um, Jeepless. They were Jeepless. And uh, for, you know, so we thought, hey, they could take Chuck. Um, and so uh, Scott, uh, as, you know, service writer and, and, and kind of acting GM, pulled it in on Saturday to find that <laughs> Chuck didn't want to go. No. Chuck didn't want to go. So which ins- He had overheard. He had overheard. And, and he was, was making things against us. He was yes. claiming, plot, plotting against us. Plotting <laughs> against you. So I understand, uh, you know, there were some belly pan uh, parts that needed tightened up. And yeah. the transmission lines needed tightened up. What belly up pan? And, <laughs> yeah, the belly pan's actually at my house. <laughs> yeah. But thanks to IRO, it's actually a serviceable unit. Yes, so, it is. Um, and, and, and I'll be honest, you know, the, the guys were a little bit out of their comfort level trying to climb up into that monster, uh, even though they have similar Jeeps. They're like, yeah, I'm not going to break the boss's Jeep today. It's like, yeah, that's probably true. But there was actually one point where the whole photo team was out and Chuck was just sitting at the bottom of a hill. I was already up top. I'm like, you want me to just bring Chuck up too so you guys excited. can get that on footage? So you can definitely wheel two Jeeps at once at Southington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey proved that. He brought it up the hill. And, and Scott L's very used to his Jeep just leaving him and then finding it later. Yeah, so. Scott Lindquist is a saint because, yes. I mean, he he too has an LJ, which we'll be talking about today. Again, just mention LJ's greatest Jeep ever made. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, but unfortunately for Scott Lindquist, when he's owned the Jeep, uh, he never gets to wheel it because no. he was out taking pictures and video. His wife and just leaves him. His wife drives it every time. Every time. <laughs> and Scott, she's Scott, a good wheeler though. And a big, big shout out to to Scott Lindquist and and Davy the Savage Thompson because they they you know we're out at these events and they're just running Hoofing behind it. jeeps you know trying to get in front of things. They're hopping in with random people going for you know going to get uh, good footage we elsewhere. Had a moment of silence for Davy's sneakers yesterday. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Davy end up in the mud? Oh, well, a couple times. I, oh, everywhere was mud there. The yeah. stuff, the stuff that our uh, we do for media content to bring to, to you, the listeners and viewers. Man, 
alive. Original content right here at SFJ. Love it. Love it. So anything else about, I mean, and obviously we, we could transition into uh, to SOR a little bit because um, we've been, been going there for years. Yep. Was any other uh, immediate feedback from the uh, the event yesterday? Uh, I, it was very positive. Uh, there's only one Jeep that made it over the certain obstacle the right way. Um, it's he's got to, he's got to bring that up but remember Holy i was cow. but i spotted him up that obstacle cuz he couldn't he's get up it i heard that he spotted you when you got stuck yes no. then it, and then i <laughs> folks you heard it promptly got out of there and let somebody else do that you, <laughs> i know what i'm not the, 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 the service it's like we got all we got there at, at, you know at the beginning of the day and uh I'm like okay who's going to lead this and they all said you are I was like okay and I told and my wife, I was like, they don't he know what they up, asked for. He took wait us up some backwoods trail that nobody had been on. I'd never uh, been there Where before. was uh, Straight mud. Where was Dalton? At the end of the lead. He no, ended I up leading Dalton. after that. Thank God. After that, we took so, Dalton and put him in charge. So I did sort of reach where I wanted to, but there was a river in between where I wanted to be and where I was. And I and it was a dead end. And I turned around and I said, well, Dalton. You're going to lead now because, ironically, you're at the beginning of the pack after we all turned around. It, it wasn't oh, a dead end. God. It was a... Okay, we can either go down this giant cliff that's not safe for any of our Jeeps. We're not going to do that. Or turn around. <laughs> oh, my god! <laughs> but gosh. I got to see a cool spot of Southington I'd never seen before. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All that's because good. the sign said, don't go this way. I was like, okay, I'm going to go that way. He went the way the sign said, don't go. He went the way the no, sign said, don't, don't, don't go that way. Now, I have to admit, I did the exact same thing about six plus years ago. And yeah. I took us we into. We don't have any sense of direction. <laughs> no, no. I've got impeccable sense of direction. Yeah. I just For don't ditches. make good choices when it comes to adventures. I'm like, oh, a place in I'd peril? Lost, I'd but... love to go there. Poor, poor uh, Kevin didn't want to get the Jeep dirty. Listen. Listen, it was yeah, it was literally in that trail. the beginning of it was, hey, we've got a stock Jeep with uh, that doesn't want to go through a lot of water. We've got uh, Kevin he, doesn't want to go in the mud. It. Scott leads us up this path right into the, all the mud. <laughs> why, why did we put the, the Jeep with ultimate axles and 37s in the front of the pack? Typically, the stalker goes first or... For the love of God, Dalton, <laughs> because he's pretty much was born and raised on the property. Yeah, it, we fixed it real fast, yeah. and everybody laughed at we me. Have and this, it was fun. We have this fantastic <laughs> guy on our trail team, and uh, he has literally been out to Southington for a decade plus. Yeah, um, on two wheels and four. On two wheels and four, based on how that property has has you know kind of uh, allowed different motorsport events to happen there. And uh, and he has done a fantastic job leading the trail rides into technical places yeah. that then are not that bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it feels technical. We, we, but... You know, it was what the first hour, and we fixed it. It was okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. It was all good, folks. Folks, if you ever have the opportunity to wheel with us, uh, please take Don't these words to me. heart. You know, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> It should be second in line or at the back, one or the yes, other. Yes, so Scott's really good with the winch. He he's, can help he's people with recovery. Great like on no other. recovery, and he's super calm, right? Yeah. Uh, he's a little panicky when he thinks he's in a bind, but he's super calm. I'm going to tell a quick story uh, uh -oh. just based on, on years ago. No, no, no. <laughs> it was um, uh, my wife and I were flying to Idaho, and uh, – uh, this is just a little little piece that I, I share about Scott and Greg. And if you've, you've been into our facility, you'll understand their dynamic. And, of course, if you're on the performance side of things, you, Greg would be your, your lead mechanic. And if you're on the vintage or restorative properties, Scott will be your lead mechanic. And, and of course, you know, they both play a pivotal role in the overall operation of the business. But my wife and I are flying to Idaho and the uh, captain comes on and he says, uh, you know, we're, we're sorry, folks. There's a, a problem with the engine. The flight's going to be delayed for a second. And I turned to my wife and my wife and I kind of giggled because they said, you know what? If we were flying with the guys, Greg would get up from his seat, right? So we know that the mechanics are supposed to be arriving. And Greg would get up from his seat and he'd be like, give me a paper clip and a butter, you know, give me a plastic butter knife and anybody got some tape and an earring and I'm going to fix that motor and blah, blah, blah. And he'd be grumbling all the way to the front of the cabin and Scott would get up and he'd turn around and say, folks, it's okay. We're <laughs> professional mechanics. We're going to be here to address your needs and take care of you and we'll be in the air in no time. And that was just 
could not better, you know, kind of, uh, you know, <clears throat> explain their dynamics of, of human beings. It's literally what would happen. That's right, <laughs> right. That's that's. And my wife and I had a good joke about that, and 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 God, obviously we sat for I don't know an hour and a half waiting for these mechanics to botch a, a engine. <laughs> it was good enough to get us to Idaho, I guess. Uh, but but Scott and Greg would have had it fixed in you know 15 minutes, uh. um, and the people would have been appeased in the process. Not this. Should we be flying after we've sat for an hour? You know? right. But uh, yeah, so I, I can totally see where leading the leading the uh, the trail ride maybe not yeah. the strongest. And I helped Jeff get good gas mileage on the way down. Oh, what? <laughs> I have never in my life seen my GPS add time to the trip because he went so slow. I was following him down. I'm like. This is ridiculous. We're not even doing the speed limit. He's an old man. He's an old man. Uh, folks, he popped out an 80-year-old. I don't I'll, understand. I'll tell you what, though. I've never seen that good a gas mileage on my GP either, so I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. I, uh, we made it in time. In time for what? <laughs> we were the last ones there, Scott. Everyone was waiting. They were already ready. They dared down. They paid. <laughs> It's okay. okay. <laughs> Everybody had fun. Yeah. And then the Everybody elected knee trail leader after all that. So, All right, folks. You're, uh. you're, it, it, obviously, it was a very green group. They had uh, <laughs> they, they not, did not have appropriate expectations set. Oh, it was a good time. It was great. We got to take two Jeeps that probably hadn't been off-road before and uh, definitely uh, fix that problem. Awesome. Oh, and, and so every Jeep was full. Every Jeep that was in our group was full. We had all the kids there, all the families. It was great. Isn't that a spectacular feeling when we're, able to, um, when we're able to create an experience for not just, uh, just us as individuals, but generationally and, and, and a positive, encouraging environment, not only the people in our vehicles, but then there's other people there who are looking in. They're seeing the convoy go through. They're seeing us get out, take pictures. The kids run around, um, hopefully safely. And it just really spreads the love of being able to use these vehicles that we well, that we build. And, and enjoy. nothing better than to be out in the trail and be like, oh, I worked on that Jeep. I worked on that Jeep. You know, guys are giving us high signs and yes. thanking us for our, our work and our dedication. Uh, and thank you all the customers that were out there yesterday. Uh, there was quite a few, actually. There was. Out so using their Jeeps. That's awesome. We're going to we're gonna talk a little bit more about Southington, but let's. Uh, there's a teaser video yep. that put, Jeff kind of, sh- you know, just pushed together. And let's watch that, and then we'll come back to it. Maybe. Maybe. Hang maybe on. we're going to. Maybe we're going to watch it. Where? It, it's They're good. really good at what they do, guys. Personally, my favorite photo. It me. is. Look at that XJ, little IRL equipped XJ there, spreading his legs. There's some drone footage for Davey. So the drone was really awesome until it blew away. Yeah. <laughs> At least it was recovered. Gladiator out there doing work. Do you, you take a big enough cooler? I, I mean, was the kid sleeping in there? Did you have a kid in there? I brought drinks for everybody. Oh, that's so kind of you. Have water, Gatorade, juice for the kids. Look at Davey getting the shot. Getting, getting there. He is. Blueberry. Yep. And uh, <laughs> well, oops, there it is. There was one wheel touching the ground. So it, that's all you need. That's what I thought. Scott stopped me. <laughs> Talked him down. <laughs> Good-looking XJ, not Greg's. Yep. That's a bone stock uh, JK Ruby. there. Yep. Ruby. Climbing hills. Look at these sexy photos. Man, it looks like we know what we're doing. I mean, it was compliments to Davey, Scott Lindquist, and Kristen was out there. So all three of them. We had some good footage. Yeah. That might have been while we were waiting. I think that was, uh, <laughs> I recognize is, that This spot. photo is in place of the drone footage that got blown away. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Look at that. Down at the beach, everybody, you know, you have to. You have to. We're, we're under the hood already. Scott, what are you doing under the hood? I can't help it. Can you it. just take a nice picture? <laughs> My can't God. 
can you just take a nice picture and <laughs> instead you've got your head under the hood of a Jeep in that last yeah. photo? Yeah. Well, Dalton's, Dalton's It's a bone actually... stock JKU. What could, what could you be looking at? I was looking at the Canon air filter telling him, thank goodness this is plastic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there was that and then Dalton's actually vapor locked at one point. We had to let him cool down and reprime him. Had to take a JK break. I'd never done that before. Really? Yeah. yeah. And that engine was hot. Really warm. 3.8 or 3.6? 3.6. It's a 12. Interesting. Yeah, we were able to cycle the pump a few times and talk sweet talk nothings to it, and it sworn to life he let it idle the rest of the time it was mint. Huh. But he has a list of things he wants to tinker with. And, of course. Uh, there was a, kind of funny. He was like, well, I'm going to change this, and Matt's over there like, I'll take your scraps. <laughs> what are you going to take off? I'm ready for them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they well, were trying to get me to upgrade to 40 so they could have my tires. Yeah, they really were. Like, ah! both like, Dalton and Matt. Aren't you done with those already? Oh my gosh! Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your wife says hello. Hi, right. honey. Um, so so it's important to note uh, Southington Off Road is very very cool space, right? And so uh, if we if we transition the program a little bit to talk about the actual space itself, um, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's a neat place, and we get a lot of questions about it on social media or uh, private message. You know, people from out of the area and they say, hey, you know, is it worth driving into? Um, you know, and then we have local people, you know, people want to dry lines, lines in the sand and say, oh, well, I have to be there every single weekend. Or uh, people say, you know, oh, I've done it once and I don't need to be there. So <clears throat> the property itself is, I believe, about 1,500 um, acres. And there's going to be somebody out there who knows this like the back of their hands. And I, I, I guarantee you that. But um, I'm going to go off of the generalities that, uh, that we have experienced over the, the years. And uh, the property itself at one time, um, which some people are or are not familiar with, was actually called Jeep School. And this was kind of an important place about a decade ago uh, to 15 years. So 10 to 15 years ago, the weekend experience where you got to go wheel was called Jeep School. And it made such headways that I believe it was Ultimate Adventure. Um, yep, they were there. Actually made it an intentional stop on their wheeling trip. Mm -hmm. And the important thing that we always tell people is that it is a park that is whatever you make of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have a buggy, you will find things to get in trouble with. And you can play. They have a nice rock garden. So as, as you pull in, for those people who are, you know, kind of the, the newbies and listening to us and you're, you're hoping to get out and, and use your Jeep in an off-road uh, off park, um, <clears throat> you, you drive down. And it is an old, um, you know, silica sand mining. Uh, there was a stone quarry. So there's actually a, a number of natural things from it being mined and utilized over the last, who knows, 30, 50 years. And now I believe it's all privately owned. There's an individual who does own the property or corporation in some capacity. I don't know what his standing is, but there's a guy who lives there and he rents it out to different groups on a weekend or weekday basis. The first weekend of every month is Southington Off-Road or SOR for short. Mm -hmm. As you drive into this location, you're, you're really on kind of a little winding back road. And you kind of, if you're, if you're coming from Cleveland or some other urban center, you might think that you hear banjos. And that's okay. Yep. I mean, the road might already be kind of an off-road path as you get there. It is, the <laughs> off-road path. I've, I've, come, I've gone in there before with like some of our big outfits, you know, like the RV and the big trailer or... Um, some of my trucks, like uh, I had the 7,000 down there last year that doesn't have really great rear suspension when it's unloaded. You know, it wants to be loaded. And I mean, I thought the truck was going to shake apart <laughs> as, I, as I just got on the, you know, the township road to the off-road park. And you get to the off-road park and you'll pull into the right. You're actually going through like a mining access gate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go through a little wooded stretch and you come upon this really neat lodge on your right-hand side and a parking space on your left. And you'll park your Jeep on the left-hand side, and, and then this little lodge is where you do your registration. Ideally, you've done your waiver beforehand. 
Yep. Should always do your waiver online beforehand. That they make makes them happy. Makes yes. them very happy. It makes them. And you they know, do have food on premise. They so do sell, go. you know, concession ta- concession stand stuff. But yep. they have a little commercial yeah. kitchen there. Where they make good food. And they have a nice little covered uh, patio on the outside so you can eat. Oh, little. and yesterday's weather was beautiful for it. So yep. a bunch of our group went and ate there under the covered patio. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. They have bathroom facilities not too far from the cabin. There is merchandise um, for sale in there. Um, in their space right there, and you you pay your money and do your registration. And then the most excited part, I haven't got to do it yet, but they actually have camping there. So to come back to your your bathroom facility, that's actually just off the camping area, your traditional camping area. And they have, you know, kind of a campground with designated camping sites. Um, If you have a bigger outfit, uh, again, I've been down there with, like, the big RV and the big trailers and stuff like that. They will let you go somewhere else in the park under their under their designation so they yeah. know where you're at and what you're doing um but they're great group of of individuals and so these individuals who are volunteering and it's important to note that the the vast majority of the staff at southington are every weekend uh you know every four weeks but every weekend of southington volunteers and they're coming out there to camp and have a good time and do recovery um kind of of, of their own free will and accord and uh, and that's important to know that they're there to just have a good time. And that's why it's important for you um, to try and follow their rules yeah. because the, the rules are not extreme. It's no. the stuff you're going to encounter at any park around the country. Wear your seatbelt. Um, don't, you know, don't drive like a crazy person. Uh, don't drink and drive. And, you don't know. Don't litter. Don't litter. And, yeah. and make good choices. Like if you, if you're. All the standard things you should always If you're do. a bone stock rig, you should not go into the dunk tank or the be, the badger's den and bury your Jeep up to the. Stay out of backwoods. Yep. Yep. You know, and stay off of people's private property if and, if and when you get close to it. Um, really standard rules. Uh, they want you to have recovery points. If you are truly brand new, they will drive you around even. Um, you can go in, you can say, hey, you know what, this is my first time out. I, I want to have a, a cool experience. They'll put together a little, like, 101 ride. Um, you know, they're not, you're not paying for it. Other parks will have you pay for a similar experience, which I highly recommend at those other parks. Um, at Southington, they'll say, hey, yeah, you know what, so-and-so is just about to go out. You can follow them, and um, they'll help you kind of get warmed up well, on top of that oh, everybody i ever meet in any situation is more than nice and if you're in a situation you need a hand or a strap or a pole or anything like that they're more than he- willing to help absolutely uh, in that situation it's all this you know, it doesn't matter if he's in a jeep or a toyota or a nissan or a suburban yes. <laughs> uh, yep. there was a suburban there yesterday a suburban there yesterday a wheeling suburban yes uh, yes well he shouldn't have been wheeling he, a suburban. he shouldn't have been but i'll tell you what he was doing some stuff with it that i wouldn't have pictured was it a stock bourbon it was yes. it was oh. barely new suburban and i gotta tell you that front air dam is pretty robust yeah <laughs> yeah it went through some water <laughs> and, huh. and i heard a couple times it hit things and uh was still there so i was pretty impressed but anyway, any, anyone wonder, will assist anytime you need a hand. You just got to be willing to ask and, and say, hey, I need, a, I need a shot or I need a guide or I need a, somebody to watch for me, and everyone will do that. Yeah, I wonder if that was Nick. He's a, he's a big bourbon guy. He's also a big full-size truck guy uh, as far as Jeep truck. Yeah, he's got yeah. younger, younger people in this oh, okay. suburban. Yeah. Not, not, not Nick. He's, he's, well, that kind of dates us. I don't know how yeah. we would uh, – <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Okay. Moving on. Um, <laughs> so there was a niece on there that we at one point thought might roll, but they they managed to get a, yeah, out he, some. He's a good wheel man. Yeah. Good. He, he did some crazy stuff with it. And that's important. Again, coming back to should I go to Southington? You know, or oh hey, I've been there once or twice before. I've done everything. You know, uh, but have you? Because because again, you know, people going back regularly with big modified jeeps find things uh, or, or trucks and buggies find things to do and again that's important with any off-road park um Don't especially to explore either it's like i i'd never found that spot i got lost in yesterday before i just happened to go down a different trail and end up in a different spot and there's lots of of that option to you obviously you just don't want to go off the property but. well and, and they have good guidance too with signs yeah. saying not to enter this area yeah it's important not to actually enter it when it says not to enter yeah. it though yeah. Um, I have done that, uh, but I'm not going to talk about that now. So, <laughs> and, and then you can't talk about uh, SOR without talking about the lake and being able to park the Jeep and pose by the, the lake. Everybody does it. Everybody takes a picture. 
Uh, it's a neat feature through. of the property. And there's some pretty gnarly uh, obstacles over by that as well. So. Yes. So, again, if you're not familiar with the location, you have basically two sides of the facility. One side is going to be more of a rocky uh, terrain, which has some increase and decrease in elevation. It, it's the stone quarry side of things. Also, um, it is a uh, more often than it's off roading as an off road park, it's actually a shooting range. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for gun aficionados, people have, have been out there shooting for decades at this point, as I understand. And so, you'll go past a bunch of these ranges and whatnot. They're not in use during the weekend, don't worry. Um, <clears throat> But it's still neat to see that they'll put park cars that they're filled with bullet holes. You got the ammo, the shells laying on the ground. People are taking pictures, really cool pictures with the shells in the forefront of the picture and the Jeeps in the background. In the background. And there's targets. They have a long range shooting competition there. Yep. They do things. It is a, you know, it is a designated recreational area for that as well. Not when you're off roading, obviously. Yep, uh, these weekends, weekends. Yep. Different weekends. This weekend, as far as when you take a full-size vehicle there, is just for full-size vehicles. You cannot have ATVs on property at the same time. Um, they will try and dissuade that from happening. If there is somebody encroaching on the property who shouldn't be, They'll, you know, the staff will make sure that doesn't happen so everybody stays nice and safe. Um, that's not to say you can't have properties operating with ATVs and full-sizes. We've certainly done those events before. Um, but again, Southington's so big of a property and there's so many people going around that, you know, they try to limit that. So just separate events for ATVs and, uh, and yeah. full size rigs. I think that's another different weekend. There is a weekend for ATVs or there used to be, I don't yeah. know if there is currently, I think, uh, pre COVID they actually had an ATV weekend as well, but you have to have somebody to run it, you yeah. know, and the, the folks who are running the Jeep weekend is running the Jeep weekend, Yeah, you know? So anyways, the property was Jeep school, uh, which was a, a very cool experience for Jeep owners in, you know, the Midwest to, you know, Eastern, uh, Eastern area of the country. And they would come over to Jeep school for, for certain instructional processes. Uh, it closed down for a short period of time, again, about a decade ago, and then reopened as Southington Off-Road, which, you know, has a longstanding support of locals who, who go there. But then it also gets a lot of people traveling in kind of checking that off their bucket list if you will the shower the bathroom facility has showers so if you're a person who wants to camp who's going to primitive camp or you know bring their their rv and you don't want to hook your water up you can you know shower and do all your utilities on site um oh i was mentioning the terrain so you have the increase and decrease in elevation with the rock quarry the rocky terrain more of a rock crawl and a rock garden on one side of the property and the really the coolest thing around here is you go to the other side of the property and there's legit sand dunes mm -hmm. yeah. because it's a silica, you know, silica deposits. And so you can go behind, which is just kind of neat. Uh, again, be careful with other people around there, but yeah. you can, you can rip it up in the sand yep. responsibly. Yep. Yeah. Um, but be careful with the mud pits over there because mud and sand, if you're familiar, uh, creates a good sandpaper, liquid sandpaper. And, um, and then it also creates these big, giant dig outs and divots. People and get stuck in them all the time. People absolutely get buried. And when I was out there, um, I don't know, not quite a year ago, a like a reasonably brand new, uh, you know, JK or JL. I don't, I don't exactly remember what, but it was clean. It was nice. Um, actually went into a uh, went into a, a mud puddle and just straight hydro locked his engine. Um, and he was really having a bad day because, you know, he didn't realize he was assuming list, risk or liability in the process. Yep. And I was like, dude, you hit the mud puddle. Like, nobody made you go through it. You, know? you got to have a little common sense. Got to have some and, common and sense. If you don't know what you're doing, kind of follow someone who does. Right. Join Not up me. with that group. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, so, you, you won't mm. get anybody in trouble. No. You just take some really weird paths. <laughs> That's oh, what I say do. Say the least. Say the least. So it's a really neat property. It's got um, a lot to offer, both from people who are local and afar. And uh, definitely think that if you haven't been, you should add it to your list. If you're a regular person who goes, I, I challenge you to find something new. And I'm, I've been going out there for five, seven years at this point, And I still... There's certain weekends where I'll go out um, and I just want to bump around. I literally just a couple little elevation changes and camp in the camper and um, kind of get away from the, the world. 
And there's been times where I've gone out there and I really want to push the vehicle and push my, my own comfort zone. Um, and, and you can do that as well. So You know what I like about it, too, is even if you've been there once or twice, Every time you go, they've changed something. They change yeah. an obstacle. They move a rock. Uh, they change the line just a little bit on things. Or it gets dug uh, out a little differently. It gets dug out differently. In. Absolutely. Uh, last year for April Fools, they they had a uh, obstacle that was too easy for people, so they slicked it up ahead mm. of time oh boy. and didn't tell anybody. Oh boy! So you're watching vehicles start to climb and then slide back down it. Oh boy! It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so the last piece to 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 just the silliest piece. Um, and again, those who know, know, and those who don't need to find out the, it, it would, we would be remiss not to mention the really fun little three letter insignia for SOR that they do. Yep. And this is just the most creative little marketing piece that I, I just can't, uh, say enough good things about. And they do the S and then they typically do like a little clover leaf or a little horseshoe different every month, different every month. Um, like a little pumpkin for the O and then the R. So what, guys, was March's? Jester. Jester. Jester? A jester. Mm -hmm. A jester. In green. I wonder why a jester. I I'm sure it has a backstory. I don't um, know it. Maybe and, related to Mardi Gras? And I know people literally. Is Mardi Gras in March? Fat Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. They, they covet these stickers. And they do sell previous runs when they don't use them all up so you can make it look like you've been there a hundred times if you haven't been there um, <laughs> that's, that's cheating obviously i would not advise you do that earn it but uh i have uh, currently i'm going down the driver's side of my window and i'm hoping to go up the other side as well and then i'll have to scrape them off and start again yes uh but you, it's really cool you go to a jeep night that isn't off-roading and you're like oh you've been to sor huh because you can see the sticker on their window yep Yep, and it's kind of a neat little badge of honor for for people, um, again, local and afar, to collect these. Yep. And uh, so I encourage you to look for those people at your local Jeep nights, your local meet and greets. You'll see those SORs. They didn't always do that. They actually used to do little Jeeps, um, yep. again, years and years years ago. You really know if somebody's old school, if they still have a little Jeep on their uh, on their windshield of some sort. I do, just so you all know. Yep. But <clears throat> we're going to take a quick break. Um, and apparently Mardi Gras was this last Tuesday. We're, there you go. We're Mardi really winning. Yeah, Fat Tuesday, <laughs> right? And also, good morning, Chip. I see you commenting on there while we're talking. I want to make sure we say hello and good morning to you as well. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back to talk about why the LJ greatest Jeep ever made. Um. <laughs> hey, Jeep family. We hope that you're enjoying this content, and we want to make sure that you head over to sfj4x4.com, find some of this cool merchandise. Give us a call at our facility, 440-813-3663. Option one. Option one. And make sure that you tune in to our live podcast every Monday at 1019 a.m. And check out our updates on YouTube on Tuesdays and Fridays. Until then, Jeep on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're live. Oh, that was a very entertaining so, commercial I break. I knew this was going to happen. I wasn't ready for this, folks. I'm sorry. Neil's just trying to clean me like I, someone cleans her child. <laughs> so I have a black spot on my forehead. I, re and, uh, I looked over, and I, I thought, oh, he's got grease. You were working on something this morning. That don't come off. If anyone's used Pure 15 or Chassis <laughs> Saver or any of that stuff, it doesn't come off. It stays on. So you you have paint on your face? I do. And on your... I was looking at you while we were while we were doing our segments yep. there, and I thought to myself, "I did try oh. to get nice and pretty for you guys, but that won't come off. I gotta wear that off." Oh my god! <laughs> you painted yourself. I painted my face oh, accidentally, yes. not on purpose. No, not on purpose. My wife tried to clean it off yesterday too. She's like, "That's not going anywhere." That's not going anywhere. <laughs> That's stuck. You're just. <laughs> You're just I knew that was going to happen. I, I thought, oh, well, I'll just swipe this piece of grease off your forehead, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, then. Can I get into your work? You, you wow. <laughs> you got into your work uh, a little too much. A little, <laughs> wow. And this is why we don't paint in our facility 100%. here. 100%. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, LJs. 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 Do you... Uh, do you want to do you want to talk to me about LJs? Do you I want have me to some, just get some into it? facts about LJs. I actually do know a lot of these off my top of my head. Should we uh, start with what an LJ is? If somebody is listening, I, I listened to some folks the other day talk about um, vehicle platforms they were not exactly aware of. And then they tried to break it down for the newbies like right like right away. Yep. And I thought to myself, 
you could have done it so much better, right? Um, so, so you want to break it down? So like, I think the basics is uh, it is a Jeep Unlimited two door. You'll hear a lot of people call it that. We call them LJs. Uh, there's a big rumor mill that they were never just actually talked about that in Chrysler Corporation as an LJ. I cry bulk pucky because there's a tag. Uh, it's on some models on the grill, some other places, and it literally has LJ stamped right in it. Um, so I, I don't completely that, but that's just my own personal so belief. So it, it is, uh, what what years and what model is it actually based so, off So of? it is 04 and a half to 2006. Uh, it was based on a TJ Sport, and they made it uh, stretch the wheelbase and made it longer. And you gain two additional inches of leg room for the oh. back seat. Okay. And 13 inches of extra cargo space from that stretch. Agreed. And then you get this magic wheelbase number that really works well off-road. That's very similar to an XJ. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and those that know, know Absolutely. how that works. Agreed. 100%. Uh, some, so, some useless but thought kind of fun facts. They actually have a longer muffler. What? Yeah. So, supposedly the facts I found online. Uh, Huh. They have a higher towing capacity than a regular TJ. Well, that's true. Which uh, 1,500 pounds more. So they actually have a total of 3,500 pounds. Yes. Uh, there is a really, really rare LJ. Uh, those that know, Rubicons were only offered in 2005 and 2006. Mm -hmm. And you could only get a stick in 05 and 06. And more boring knowledge that you'll never use again. Uh, 04s had a special top. They had a special side window that was actually a defect. And they uh, changed it in 05. Well, it wasn't exactly a defect. Well, it, it was, rubs, uh, rubs the window. Right. They found out that it was not a good design. Yeah. Right? So just, just splitting hairs, the yeah. finite minutia. They had they made the window. Well, again, because of how the soft window top. one big window in 04. They made one big window, but then the arm of the soft top, the way that the, the chafe arm it. would chafe through, the, through yeah. the plastic. But it's really, like, I'm a Jeep nerd. So if I am out of the Jeep show and I see it. LJ and I see that big back one side window like oh he's got the original top on that because now when you buy a new top it's like the 0506 they style. all come the 0506 yep um you only uh so most of them were based off of a sport trim level so you had a little bit nicer uh, upholstery carpet uh they all had Dana 44 rear axles you started to talk in the rear all yes. 944 in the rear in the rear you had started to talk about a unicorn yeah and yep. I wanted to I I know what you're about to talk about yeah. but uh, so the unicorn is was only made in 2005. It was a Rubicon. I've never been a big fan of it personally because I don't like a light colored interior or a khaki colored interior. That's my own personal, you know, opinion. Apologize, uh, but it's an LJ Rubicon Sahara. Yep. It was made for uh, a movie called Sahara, and it had it was a, a good movie. Chrome grill, uh, offset colored fender flares. Two-tone seats, tail lamp guards, khaki-colored spare tire cover, uh, and obviously all the normal Rubicon specs plus cool Sahara's badging. And they only made a thousand of them. Yep. So that's that's a regular LJs at this point are becoming very valuable, and uh, people have a cult following. If you have a low mileage Ruby Sahara, that's something you put away in the corner because that will be worth money someday. Um, and, and regular clean ones are already starting to get there. So typically, we talk about the number of LJs produced in their 04 and a half to 6 run. Yeah, I actually found some fun stuff on that, too. Okay. So it's you, if you just search it online, you'll get 44,000 were made. That's the one that most everybody quotes, just yep. under 45,000. That doesn't tell you how many were exported. Interesting. That was domestic market. Domestic market. Fascinating. So if you add up... Total made, they made 12, almost 13,000 in 04. They made 21,000 ish in 05 and about 22,000 in 06. Um, so obviously they were catching on a little bit. Right. Uh, so a grand total of 55,497. And if you are so of Jeep nerd as me and want to know how many of your color was made, they have that information out there for you. Oh, boy. Export and regular in-house stuff. And some of them, there was literally only seven made for some of the exports in really? a certain color, yeah. uh, which is really interesting. I like unicorn stuff like that. So Yeah, the rarity piece. Yeah. So from a, um, from a, a kind of a factual 
position. We've both, in fact, we've owned the same LJ. Same LJ. Chuck uh, Norris was mine before. Chuck Norris was It was Scott's. Chuck Norris. <laughs> uh, before it was Chuck Norris. It was, it was, it was Scottified, yeah. right? Which, of course, meant it had, like, an obscure tire size, like yes. 32s. Yes. Um, and was intended to be. CB with weather. A reasonably <laughs> stock, um, kind yeah. of, Two-inch lift at that time. Uh, and I, I grew up in XJs. Uh, and liked the wheelbase, liked the you know, the length and the use. And I said, if I was ever going to get a Wrangler, it would be that. I remember there was an ad. Uh, did you pull the tab, and the TJ got longer, and I had that. I saved it out of a, a magazine mm-hmm. as a kid. And I just really, really, really wanted one. Uh, at that point, they were almost $20,000, and I was a young person. Couldn't afford one. So I found one, and needed some love, and fixed it up. And that is Chuck Norris. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is an 04. Uh, we, for some reason, seem to get a plethora of 04s through here. Um, another thing that's special with 04s is actually the ECU and wiring is all special, one-year-only stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a separate TCU for the automatic. And like I said, all 04s were automatics. Uh, obviously, they all had six cylinders. Um, all of them had uh, pretty basic drivetrain stuff that you're used to. Um, yeah, and this is what was really cool at the time, folks. And I, I have that, uh, there's a video out there about how to buy a TJ. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't talk a whole lot about LJs, though I think the, the video might even start out in front of Chuck in the process. But, um, you know, we had this this rebrand uh, as far as, you know, Jeep Chrysler Corporation in 97 re-released the TJ with this expectation that they were going to kind of have broad and mass appeal they were really going after bigger market share than they had ever had before. Yep. And with the increased success of the TJ platform, by, um, by 2002, 2003, with Mercedes' um, influence, as Mercedes, uh, I guess the Daimler yeah, aspect, the Daimler aspect um, of it. had kind of started to weave their fingers into the production run, there were some really cool engineers, and uh, I'm going to reference this guy's name um, just based on our experience with him. It was an engineer named by the name of Lowell Babcock, and he's a very cool dude who we, we knew personally for a period of time. He's retired now. We refer to him as Grandpa Lowell. Grandpa Lowell when we, we met him because he was just very, very kind to us as a young business and yep. then to our families, to our yes. kids and whatnot. And it was so cool that he was part of the development team for the LJ and we got to ask some really cool questions like, hey, did you think this through when you were doing this? And he's like, oh, yeah, but the bean counters didn't know that. Right. Yeah, it, was, it was really awesome to so, be able to talk to one like that. So the folklore piece is, is there's a, a group, and, and it used to have a semi-truck. If you've been in the industry long enough, about 20 years, you'll know that uh, Jeep had something called Mopar Underground. Mm-hmm. And they, I think they still kind of do those are the guys who really push the limits, right? They're the ones who are like, hey, we should take a 1,000 horsepower you know, factory motor and stuff it in a, a car. Yeah. Um, and then, and at some point in time, you know, administration and bean counting goes, yeah, is that a good idea or not? Right. Yeah, I, I want to say the beginning of that is how they became, how the Rubicon happened as well. It is because they literally had their, the higher ups are like, we don't need lockers and all this sort of stuff. They won't sell. And they sandbag them and put things in Jeeps, and then let them drive them. And they're like, oh, this is so much better. And that is the exactly. folklore behind that. And, of course, the <laughs> Rubicon we see first in 03. 03. Right? So we can see where uh, they start to make the an Jeep influence. brand starts to make an influence, where the Mopar Underground starts to make an influence in kind of salvaging this, you know, kind of pure-blooded, rugged experience. And, uh, and of course, coming out of the CJs and the YJs, Jeep is making them a little wider, a little, a uh, little lower. You know, yeah. giving them better ride quality. They kind of go back to the roots of the off-road and, and all-terrain use. Exactly, and, and so the, and that and, and is why there's a 392 on 35s currently today. Today, but it all starts. I, I really give credit to that late run of the TJ production, which then yep. is like, hey, we're gonna get really crazy. Yes, and we're gonna build a long Jeep. Yeah, and uh, and of course. Uh, those of you who may or may not be aware, uh, I own a semblance of each long Jeep in production, at minus one or two other unicorns. Yep. And the CJ6 is arguably the most produced long wheelbase Jeep. That's never seen. That's never seen. It's the rarest at this point in time. Yeah. 
um, but it was used up. it was actually I mean two hundred thousand of them made yeah. over their over their ten year. They were almost in in uh, they were like ten to twelve year lifespan. Back then, people didn't even realize they were that unicorn. It was just something you used as a tool, and because it was longer, oh, I can stuff more stuff in it, which made it a little harder on the Jeep, and that's why less survived. Absolutely, it is. And then they you know that goes away by the early seventies, and uh, by eighty one. They release the Scrambler, the Scrambler, which falls flat on his face because uh, it's got a body only a mom can love. (laughs) And the issue, the cool thing about the CJ6 and the Unlimited is where they've positioned the rear axle in correlation to the overall tub or body itself. So see, the thing with the Scrambler is it had a massive overhang which is obviously an argument that uh, people squabbled about at the water cooler regarding the Gladiator yeah. most recently. So here's a real useless fact that I only know because I did it. Okay. If you put a 72 nose on a CJ6, it's actually almost the same wheelbase as a, um, a LJ as well. Folks, you heard that, right? That he took a LJ, he took the body off of the top of the LJ, and he took a CJ6 body and he put it onto an lj he actually 72 up longer nose yeah which is a differentiation than cj6 but that's for a different story but this is about the lj that the lj was so cool that uh they found uh he he and another guy found a damaged one and they took the body off i think if i remember right a cow fell on the jeep no i know the real story but it sounds better when you say a cow fell on i think it was actually the combine combine harvester ran it over yeah, there was grain in the Jeep, and that LJ <laughs> still still sold for good money as a yes. as a wreck. It out. had very low miles. It was in the teens. Uh, it was an O five. Um, to my knowledge, that Jeep's still around. It plowing, is. it's a plow Jeep. Yeah, now it's... at this point. But the fun part is, is I made the the roll bar, the seats, the steering column, uh, all the heater and stuff from the t- the LJ fit in the CJ six body, which is phenomenal. Which is yeah. a testament to to your craftsmanship, but. Um, so, th- again, the desirable nature of the LJ is that they, they then learned, uh, they dipped back into the history books, and they pulled out that, uh, that wheelbase, the positioning of the axles for the, an ideal departure angle. Yep. And, um, and then they, they went ahead and, and used that versus the Scrambler. So, again, the Scrambler was even a lower production run, but it also wasn't well-received. Yeah. So by the time the LJ was out, people were kind of excited about it. They were. Then they thought, hey, this is a vehicle that I could tow my boat to the lake with. This is something I can load down with camping gear. If you have a TJ, you have, you know, only about 14 <laughs> inches of rear cargo space. Yeah. Um, whereas the LJ, you can throw a handful of groceries in there. And you got to imagine people get a kick out of when I take Chuck to the grocery store and I load up the back <laughs> of it. Um, you know, it's a good grocery getter. It Honestly, is. it is. Yep. Um, and the kids are more comfortable in it. And obviously, I have a family of four, and we've traveled with LJs. And my dad bought his first LJ in 2006. It's, it's so, also an 04. <laughs> which is also an 04. And it's also a, a wildly low miles. I mean, not wildly, but he, uh, if yeah. he's at 60,000. Yeah, if he's got 60,000 miles on it, um, I'd be surprised. Which, ironically, the two most produced colors in 04 was black and silver. So your dad's a silver and, and Chuck mine's... Norris is black. Yeah, go figure. Yeah. Go figure. And and all of this is important. We have quite a few LJs that come in and, and through the shop at any given time. Yep. They're just a highly desirable vehicle. They're, they are a wheelbase that gives stability in on-road tracking and uh, then all the applicable things that follow with that, energy transfer, towing, uh, load carrying capacity, so on and so forth. But a width that makes them ideal off-road. And so I think that some of the actual functional pieces have have given way to the folklore of the quality of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, the JK and and then the JL and the JT platforms are arguably, I would tell you, five times more buildable. Yeah. And out of the box, uh, more capable. But they are here because of that that lonely little you know fifty five thousand two-door Jeeps that were made that kind of opened the eyes of like, hey, this actually will work and people will buy it. And, Absolutely. And that's why you see the four-door Unlimited and why they continue that name on. The original Unlimiteds. Yep. Very cool stuff. Folks, we are going to transition into our hashtag not sponsored category. Yep. And we're going to play that for you now. And now it's time for our product spotlight. Hashtag not sponsored. Spotlight. Hashtag not sponsored. They can hear us. Yeah. So don't 
say anything too cock- cockamamie about your wife's dresser. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Are we good to go? Yeah. All right, folks. So this is uh, a beautiful piece sitting before us right now, and uh, a product that we regularly use here at our facility. And I recently was on the phone with one of uh, their engineers, and I thought to myself, you know, this is a part that our customer base cannot see. No. Nope. It's it's it doesn't have the same appeal as as your light bar or your bumper. This is a functional piece, but it's a really good piece. It is a really really good piece. And I've seen some, you know, some some engineers of their home engineers saying it's got these weird weights on it, and I don't think those are supposed to be there. They actually are there for a reason, mm-hmm. and they are actually a very good thing to have. It helps clamping force. It adds mass to those fingers. So when you let off the pedal, it grabs that, that disc, and it's very smooth at the same time. It's not like if anybody's had a high-performance car with a heavy clutch where your foot's on fire after pushing it for five seconds. This is not that. So for those of you who are listening in right now, what we are talking about, and those of you who maybe not cannot make it out in the video, this is a product. This is a, a clutch pressure plate from Center Force. So our, our product uh, line is Center Force by Midway Industries. And, um, and what we have here is their performance uh, pressure plate. And, uh, and, and what's not on display is they have their own clutch discs. Yep. And then for many applications that we sell our customers, they actually have a balanced heavyweight flywheel. Yep. It's very popular in the 3.8 and the 3.6 Jeeps. Uh, Love it. Billet, I believe. In uh, many very, situations. Very high yes. quality. Um, you know, if you have a standard shift, JK or JL coming, uh, that is the thing to do. So in our hashtag not sponsored, we're, we're looking at this. Uh, Center Force as a manufacturer has uh, been around since the 80s. And so it was, it was created by an individual uh, named Bill Hayes, and he actually created it with Hayes Clutches. <laughs> and uh, he was a hot rodder, folks. Yep. And he, he wanted a clutch that would hold up with the rigors and expectations of, you know, of hot rodding. Big yep. motors, go fast. Um, and one of the things I specifically liked with them is that you, you know, you don't have to buy us a really elaborate clutch. This one you can kind of pick and choose. Uh, I need this pressure plate or that pressure plate. They color code them. There's gold, orange, that kind of things. And you can use the crossover, and then you get to the disc itself. And the one we're running on on this Jeep is more of a standard, uh, typical used to looking at clutch. But then they have ones where it's one side the standard, and then it's almost like a, a puck style on the opposite side, and then mm-hmm. they have straight puck style. And so you can go and be like, I have this horsepower. I'm going to do this with it with wheeling. I'm going to be on and off the clutch this much. And they will say, okay, you need this specific part, which is why they do have kits, but we don't do that. We actually pick the parts and pieces of that uh, to best outfit your vehicle. And, and so they have made a you know, a living uh, for honestly 40 plus years at this point in developing quality clutch technologies. This is again, something that's just, you're never going to see this. In fact, most people who pay thousands of dollars for a clutch job kind of other than the fact that the Jeep just flat out works oftentimes don't even really know what's happening in there. And unfortunately, because there's a lot of other moving parts and pieces around the clutch assembly, um, you know, your hydraulics might not be as strong or might go out in the process, or maybe your shift or your transmission is, is a little loosey goosey. I heard uh, recently of someone who had a, a clutch assembly done and uh, it, it still didn't work because it was misdiagnosed and the transmission was actually the problem. Yeah. And so they're, you know, they're far into the process and, and a couple thousand dollars down the hole and, and they're going, well, that's the clutch's fault. Well, no, it's actually the synchros and the transmission are bad, but it was a misdiagnostic. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so, so Midway via, you know, Center Forest via Midway creates these designs that are robust in our motorsports industry. What's kind of fun about these, and I don't know if our, our, our you know, mics, I think our mics can kind of pick it up. You can hear that noise. Um, one of the, kind of the signature pieces, because this is not typical on a pressure plate. No. Um, 
And and so you can you can oftentimes hear these as you're working the clutch pedal. It's not annoying though. It's not annoying, but it, it's it's something that hey, you know, there's a performance piece in there. Yeah. And sometimes that's the extent of what the customer kind yes. of discovers. The other thing about the heavyweight flywheels, if you think about, um, you know, at some point in time, most of us have been on some type of exercise bike where there's you know it was kind of popular in the 90s, early 2000s, to have that heavy flywheel on as the pedal wheel on the uh on the bike every kid winds that up and then the pedals go like crazy because it's got the mass to keep yeah, going yeah for and, sure and that's what that heavy flywheel does for your three eight and your three six it allows uh, you to, to store energy yes. in the, the rotational so you can put it in the gear and just let it eat and it'll go up the hill because it's got that extra inertia to keep the engine going it won't stall as easy uh, which it, it, I think they do that for the four liters too, don't they? I, I, they did at but one it's time. It's not as needed be at this inline six. It's got a lot of you know six in a row makes it go kind of scenario. But uh, <laughs> oh, the v- fighting words. Out of- <laughs> the V six, it, it you know a little higher revving, a little different power band, so the heavy flywheel really assists in that. Absolutely. So a big shout out to to Center Force and their level of engineering. They've recently, and when I say recently, within the last five to seven, eight years, started putting packages together. Yep. Um, Scott said, we're, we're still cut from an old school cloth where we're cherry picking the best parts um, that they have available. But for our JK and, and JL customers, they have attempted to uh, combine all of their products into kind of easily digestible kit numbers. Yep. Um, so an important part of doing a clutch, and it's something we do here standard, but it, it does kind of always shock me that people go to other garages and they don't do certain things. Um, but you're going to have a flywheel. You're going to have a, a, a disc. You're going to have a pressure plate. You're going to have a throwout bearing. And then you're going to have a pilot bearing. And so you have this assembly of parts that all make them work together. And, uh, again, recently within the last few years, yeah, you in got case, something. It's like you're opening on Christmas. Just in case you don't know, this is actually the throwout bearing. This rides here on these fingers, and it's actually a, a bearing. And this is what your for, your clutch pedal moves in and out. And it moves in and out via, you know, a hard linkage in our most vintage vehicles, um, an internal slave at one point in our mid-'80s manufacturing to an external slave. Um, as far as the hydraulic system is concerned. And it, I, I, rumor has it that we're going to be moving to an internal slave uh, with our JLs. And uh, we actually have a prototype Jeep running around with one of those at mm-hmm. this time. And so <clears throat> if, you, if you can conceptualize it, those of you who are listening, maybe watching, and you're not 100% sure how this works, your flywheel is bolted to the crankshaft of your motor. And that flywheel is, is kind of constantly spinning in the same revolutions as your RPMs, right? So as, if you, you're watching your tachometer on your on your gauges, your crankshaft is, is moving relative to that readout. Then your disc is in between uh, the pressure plate and the flywheel. So it goes flywheel, then um, disc. Uh, disc, and then pressure plate, and then throw out bearing. And again, that throw out bearing is moved in with some form of hydraulic or mechanical attachment and uh, it's moving the disc itself here. Uh, and this pushes down the fingers, flex, pulls back the uh, surface. Let's see if you can show them the surface here. Right here. And that'll push against and That them. goes in, and then that releases that disc that's trapped, and then you can then be in neutral or, uh, you know, the Jeep won't Free move. spinning. Free yeah, spinning. The, yeah, the, at that point in time, the transmission, the power transfer from the engine to the transmission is interrupted. Is interrupted. Yep. So um, it's a very cool technology. A lot of people in the Jeep world are like, hey, it's got to be a manual. Uh, I'm a big auto driver. I'll be the first person to say I, I love just put, point and shoot. But uh, clutch is a, a, a valuable part of our history. Yep. And Center Force has, uh, we're thankful Center Force has been around for 40 years doing great things. And they're recently pushing the bounds with the JL. So a big shout out to them, their quality manufacturing, their customer follow through, and uh, their ability to continue to be relevant in a market um, that's ever changing. Yep. So. Um, I do have a quick blind react for today. It's, oh, it's boy. Short. Oh, boy. Are we going to be able to hear it? Are they going to hear it? Uh, there's actually yeah, yeah, yeah. audio on the blind react this time. It's just a, a video clip from Scott L. from this weekend's adventures. Oh, there was adventures. a blind react. I didn't see it on the paperwork here, folks. That's, oh, boy. 
That's okay. So I'm just going to pull up the video here. Give me one second so that I can make sure you guys can see it too. That's just a green screen. That's us. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Why are we? Why so, is three people just just so uh, Matt high centered? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So those who don't know, uh, Matt's on our trail team, and he just picked up a 2016 uh, Rubicon with uh, the recon package. So it's a special hood, bumpers, all that stuff. I want it. It had never been scratched before this weekend. That has definitely been taken care he, of. He, uh, he, he took care of that. He yeah, broke he that one that. in, huh? Uh, Popped the seal. I'm on three inches, three and a half inches with 37s, and I drug my belly where he tried to go, and oh, he boy. did it with uh, the skinny pedal. Oh, so he uh, just got up there and planted himself. And uh, rather than taking the 15, 20 minutes of going around to try to pull him back off, the guy's just, just manhandled, manhandled it. it off of the <laughs> obstacle. <laughs> where was Davey at in that picture? Taking pictures. He was taking pictures. Okay. Okay, because I feel like Davey could have just stared it down. You yeah. will move off that Yeah, it, it started with Dalton went over to push, and it didn't do anything. So yeah. I started to push, and then uh, whoever the third person was, I don't remember. Came over. I, I whoever, whoever the third person came over is just like, bing, and it just popped off. Yeah, yeah. we just needed that third person, that third apparently. Person, or Davey stared at it, I think. I, I still I, think the probably Savage what stared it down. It was scared. It was scared that he was coming for it. Um, well, that, was, uh, that was really something. I was going to comment, which... If you haven't ever done this before and your Jeep might be modified at this point, the best thing you could do is take your bone stock Jeep off-roading. Yeah. And it's, it's Scott has done that. I've done it. And, and Chuck, when he was just two inches and, and nothing and tires. bone stock Rubicon. Other than, obviously, he probably shouldn't have done that. But he survived. He made it through the whole day. And it makes you a better a great driver. great time. Uh, had his family with him as well. Uh, got to use his lockers and his disco sway bar and stuff. And he just plain worked. Love it. Kevin Love said it. hi also. Hey, Kevin. All right, we're going to close, folks. We oh, have nope. an activity. Yep. Go ahead. I thought you were trying to end the show. I'm like, no, we got a game. No, I'm excited to do this game. Because I, I, yeah, I, I don't know about I, this. I, uh, an SFJ exclusive Jeep auction stars. Do I have Neil versus Scott. An epic showdown. Bidding proportion. 14, 45, 15, 15. Do I have 15? Go once, go twice. Sold. I have a setup where you guys are going to see an image of a Jeep. Uh, you're going to have to competitively bid on this. Um, <laughs> okay. So let me. We have different tastes in Jeeps, so this might be interesting. We're going to pull up the rules here. Uh, so each round wow. will consist of a Jeep image. No information will be provided. These images are taken from local dealerships with their price listings, just so you know. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Each oh, no. contestant will be allotted oh, no. 250000 imaginary dollars to start I'm with. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You will bid against each other till we have a clear winner on each Jeep. After the bidding is complete, the actual listing will be displayed for the amount that they have it listed for. Okay. Uh, if a contestant gains or loses money, it'll be updated in their bank, and our viewers can see your guys' bank. Uh, the objective is to have the most money by the end of the game. Number of rounds is not going to be revealed, so spend wisely. Ooh. I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you must make at least one competitive bid per round, or else you'll be penalized the value of the round. Oh. So that you can't just sit back and be like, I don't want this You one. know, he thought about this he one. He did. I, I know how you guys are. I'm, I'm learning. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> All right, so. Jeffrey, this is good. Yeah. This is, this here's, is, oh. here's your first Jeep. <laughs> you know, okay. you want that for a commuter deal Go i do ahead. want that for a commuter and it's in bikini it is i'm going uh i'm going for uh, 24 599 scott do you have a bet on that i don't want that <laughs> you got to competitively <laughs> bid <laughs> competitively bid. this is an auction a dollar that's not competitive. You're, you're going to get penalized here. <laughs> That's why I put that penalty in place. I bid. That's not a competitive bid. Oh. Let me use up all my money. I don't that's want to a, spend that's my money a, on that's, that. But that's a bikini. I mean, I would take for anything it's, bikini color be, in my driveway. I mean, that's got to be listed for 27 8 or something like that. That would oh, be my guess. He went to 27 8 Neil, are you going to up that? Yeah, I'm going to have to up it because I, I do think that the market's really, really nutty right now. So I'm going to go with uh, 29 9 9 God, do you I'm, want to, I'm I'll take it. I'm holding firm. Okay. Okay, so Neil's going to go 29.99. Yep. Take that from your account. 
And 27, 437 oh. is the current listing on a 2020 Jeep Renegade Latitude. Oh, man. Well, wait, that's actually at a dealership? That is actually at a dealership. All right, that's fine. Whatever. Are you going to put mine on there? No, no. you won. No. You, you were competitive, so no. you actually technically won. You still have your bank. Uh, yep. And he he I lost a little money, it. so I only I lose money it. when I don't win. Yeah, because I overbid uh, it by, well, by 2000 bucks. Or you could actually gain money if you underbid and win. Oh. Right. Right. So I'm fifteen hundred bucks over value on that, which you were really darn close. What did you say it was? Twenty seven? I'd said I'd said twenty seven eight. Yeah, you were you were darn close. And what did I start? I started at twenty six. Yeah. I went to twenty five five or so. Yeah, you guys you guys bid accordingly for that. Yeah, yeah, we're in the ballpark. I was expecting it. I was ex- what year was it? Did we say it was twenty twenty? It was a twenty twenty. All right. All right, on to the next. So uh Man, I feel like I've I've reviewed that one. Do I have any specs on it other than the you fact that you I just no have specs. to look at no it? Specs? You, you got a picture. You have to make a decision based on a picture. Oh, my gosh. Are those fuels or are those moto metals? They look like moto metal wheels to me. Those are moto metals. 20s. It looks like a 20 to me. So that, 20 and a 37. I'm going to say 32.5. <sighs> uh, you're way under, I think. But maybe I don't know. Is it a sport? Does it say anything down the hood? No. I want to. I want to. All right. I'm gonna go with thirty-four seven. Thirty-four seven. What did you say, Scott? I said thirty-two five. Do you, you want to up it them, or are you gonna? I'm gonna hold hold firm. Thirty-four seven. You said. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Thirty thousand eight thirty-two. We both were over. Who's selling a JL? It's or no, not... that's a JK. So it's, it's got to be a 15 and newer because it has clear parking lights. Yep. And it's modified. So I thought it was a JL. That, I'm not going to lie. So that's a, I'm sorry, a, folks. a 16. <laughs> 2016 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport was that one. Um, yeah. Mine was just, you know, praise for 30. So. All right. So here's your next one. Mm. It's a good looking Jeep. There. It is. I'd drive it. Oh, man. Yeah. I want, I, I'd love it. I'd love it. I was thinking about buying one and just 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 leaving it stock. Me too. I'd like to leave it stock. Um, it's a it's a Rubicon though. It is. It's well, at least it's stickered as a Rubicon. It's got the I wheels mean, it's got and the, the bumpers. It's got it does, yeah, and it has a little tow high. hook. The tow hook's red, right? Yeah. So, and and notice that, he picked one with a bug detector. Yeah. I, and I think that's actually the same one I have. Make sure you accordingly put that he in your bag. He literally bin. picked Search it, it with a bug deflector. I feel like that, he purposely picked it with a bug deflector. I, I will say that was accidental, but I love that I did that. That is the, <laughs> just, just the... I love how the... These, I you, don't support bug deflectors in any capacity, folks. Let's just... Let's hey, just the Bushwhacker one's nice. <clears throat> <laughs> we do support Bushwhacker. They yes, make good do. products. <laughs> it's ironic. It's got a red top with non painted flares it's really yeah. unique how they're optioning these i like that i'm gonna go uh at 42 7 49 8 Ooh, you're gonna up him on that no he can have that one so scott's gonna go 49 8 because i feel like you've been finding like the, the actual affordable ones holy fifty three thousand nine ninety seven for a 2020 jeep gladiator rubicon i sandbagged on that because i've been looking at these for about a year and a half so i knew what that was <laughs> About being. Yeah, but you know what? Jeffrey's picked like undervalued things so far. As far as these markets. From 49 to about 55, it depends on the way it's optioned inside, which we can't see. I'm with you. I I totally get that. But if you say 50K on a Rubicon JT, you're pretty much Pretty much safe. safe. Yeah, I I, I agree. I just keep wanting them to be a real price and not these inflated crazy things. Oh, KL. Uh. (laughs) I like KLs. I, I have do. no idea what they run, though. I'll be honest I, with I, you. Well, it's got a red tow hook, so it's a... Trailhawk. Trailhawk. Um, I'm going to go... And I, we have no idea what year it is. Well, um, they've redesigned the nose, so it's an older nose. But I should be helping you. Yeah. No, no you shouldn't be. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you should be taking advantage of your knowledge and, and oh using that. I'm going to go at uh, 23.2. I'll say 32.5. Wow. Wow. Are, are you going to try to up that? No. <laughs> 32.5. I, like, I think that's like a 15 Trailhawk. 
It is a 14 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. Scott lost the money on that lost one. Lost $12,000 on that one. That's okay. Wow. So, Neil, you've taken the lead on the bank. Yeah. Just. Just. <laughs> Just. Here we go. Oh, come on. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Yep. I had to make it a little more challenging. And I, I, I do feel for you because <laughs> I know you're blind as it is. <laughs> And now you're looking at this tiny picture into the into the into the studio lights over here. I know what dealership that is, so <laughs> I was gonna say I feel like I used three different dealerships, so this is he really did use local dealerships. Yeah, yeah I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, which makes sense why the pricing is more appropriate. If yeah. I would have like kind of put that together beforehand, yep. Because these are real prices for people yeah. really in this area. Not the crazy stuff that it's like upstate Michigan and it's like Two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Twenty four five. Oh, that's a good. That's a good guess. Um, I think he's sandbagging this. I think it's an older one. I think it's an old one as well with Rubicon wheels on it. Yeah, I wonder if you could see that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to say it, but it's got uh, sport steps on it's it. It's got sport steps. It's got ashed out flares i yeah. think that this one is a uh a, like a bring you in the door package yeah and i think it's i'm gonna go 18 8 oh i don't think it's that low so scott you said 24 5 yep so scott's gonna take that and let's see Ooh. 2012 jeep Davey, wrangler unlimited sport. look at that Davey. 16 5 that one's for the savage Davey, you need to go look at that that's cheap that it is actually very yeah but it's because what it's, year is it's, it Twelve. It's, it's a twelve. It's that's because it's for rusted 16, in half. Five. It's because it's rusted in half. You should totally go test drive that. Bring it here and make sure it's okay, and then buy it. Oh, that's a great plan. <laughs> that one's that one's not far away. No, no, that's not. I see, and I knew exactly. That's what they're doing. They buy these old ones that are reasonably that's stock have looking. High miles. On oh, it's got to have high miles, it's and it's probably open. rusty as can be. But they they price it cheap, and you look at it at the ad, and you're like, oh, that's reasonable. And you get there, mm -hmm. and then you end up buying something better. Okay, I'm gonna give you a, a, a clue that this is the last one today. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, the competition's on then. I got eleven thousand dollars to lose. <laughs> um. Hmm. Wait a second. I don't you, know the JL the, pricing. You, as wait a second. Trucks. You're telling me that this is at a local dealership? Yes. It's gotta be brand new. Is that the stock photo? Yeah, I call him bull honky on that one. I, oh. I went right to a local dealership, took stock photos right off their site. Yeah, that's a brand new one that isn't hit the lot yet. It's still yeah, on the truck. Or it's, yeah, it's on the truck and it's showing. Or they haven't got it pretty yet. that saddle interior. The listing actually had real photos on their lot. I wondered if oh. it did. I wondered if it had real photos on their lot, and then this is the stock photo. You were being so tricky. You was. I'm trying. This is a good game, though. I like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going. Uh, I'm going. Oh, God. See, this is going to hurt me. I'm going to go uh, 82.5. Where the heck would you get that number from? 50K. You're not even going to try to touch it. 82.5, huh? There's no way that's almost 90K. Oh. 2018 Wrangler Unlimited Sahara. I was Sahara. just letting you have the game. <laughs> 45,300. That hurts. It doesn't Neil. have the right wheels to be it a 392, man. 18 Sahara? It was an 18 Sahara. Oh man, it doesn't have the right wheels. I knew that stock photo would throw that you guys stock off. Stock photo took me out. Took me out at the knees. <laughs> if it was a 392, you would have been right on point. Yeah, at 82.5. Yeah. So there is a local listing for a Jeep, for a Wrangler, for 106,000 right now. I believe it. And I, I almost put that in. I'm like, no, no, I can't do it. Oh, I just man. can't. That's what was, what was special bad. about the hundred? For the 45. Oh, <laughs> I was, was going like, to say what? <laughs> no. Calm Folks, down. if you Let think 106 is fine, buy yourself this 45 and come give us the rest of the, the, yeah. rest of the 50G, and we'll throw something I mean, cool in there for you. Being Sahara, if it's got decent miles, that 45.3 isn't terrible for value right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I Wow. 45,000. You know what? Somebody posted on their, their social media you know, recently, and it was like, did you realize that we are buying vehicles at the cost of houses? Yeah. And, they do, and keeps vehicles depreciate exponentially in, in value to a house. Yeah. So if you live in any of our, you know, market radius, which is roughly three hours from Cleveland, you know, from Toledo to Buffalo to Pittsburgh, yep. 
You can buy a house. My for house the same was eighty k. So yeah, I can. I can't buy a three ninety two for what I paid for my house. Yeah, yeah. Go figure. All right, folks. Uh, this was a fun one, Jeffrey. Thank you for for providing us uh, this activity. Um, you know, I hope you enjoyed. If you have something that's interesting, you know, definitely message us via the uh, the sfj 4 dot com. Go over there, get yourself some gear. Uh, find us on Facebook, on Instagram. Find any of our personal stuff. If you see us on the trail, make sure you stop us, say hi, um, talk about your Jeep. We like talking Jeep with everybody, so we're here to do that. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, smash that notification bell, and turn on the the little part to get all of our updates because we've got some cool original content that we put out uh, for you, the Jeep and auto enthusiast. If you're listening to us on on your favorite podcast. Uh, you know, s- streaming service of some manner. If you can, sh- spread the word. Go out, share with somebody, tell them, hey, you got to listen to this group. They're pretty cool. They've got some information. And I know that we're constantly doing little fun blooper reels or little specials on there for you as well. And if you would be so kindly, you know, go out and leave us a review um, and, and tell us how we're doing. And hopefully it's, you know, a five-star review. And if it's not, tell us why it's not. And that's okay. We'll address that accordingly. Or we'll just cry in the corner. So, (laughs) folks, I hope you had a fun time. And uh, we hope that you will join us in one of our many platforms that we can connect with you. And we'll do it again next Monday at 1019 a.m. Until then, Jeep on. Jeep on.